to my talk about testing Java EV. Very glad we have a totally packed room, so apparently Java EV is not bad yet. Which is good. Um, hi from my side, my name is Sebastian Daschner. I'm a German, I'm from Munich, and I'm a Java developer, architect, consultant, whatever you want to call it. I'm self-employed as a freelancer. Um, I'm participating in the uh, JCP. If you don't know what the JCP is, the Java Community Process, it's the thing which standardizes um, also Java EE. And I'm a so-called expert group member for JAXRS. The uh, JSR370 will be included in Java EE8, expert group. And recently I also became a um, Java champion, apparently. And I'm on um, various conferences and like this one. Um, more about myself, um, we're holding some, or I'm holding some uh, workshops and trainings, mostly in Munich. So just in July there will be um, six days in total of Java E hacking about JAXRS, of course, and Hypermedia REST, and July the 15th. And then a long workshop about testing Java EE, so um, everything which I will be presenting shortly will be there in full depth, and also about continuous integration, delivery, deployment, and stuff like that, a uh, complete week where we talk about this. So if you want to visit Munich someday, then maybe this will be an opportunity. Um, it could be also uh, in English if that's uh, desired. And yeah, these workshop seats are of course somehow limited, so if you have a like, like a company and want to do something, something else like a dedicated workshop on demand, or maybe you want to um, invite me to some, some other place than Munich, then just contact me. Here are my um, contact data. Like, uh, I'm blogging mostly about Java and Java E uh, on blog at sebastian.com. Of course, I've uh, got Twitter and GitHub as well. And yeah. <coughs> And that's all of my slides, because slides are boring and we want to implement something, right? So we want to do some um, live coding, of course, uh, of a Java E application. So it's about testing, <laughs> and the question, who wants to test anyway? So who of you likes testing? Hands up. Oh, so you're in the wrong talk, because then you don't need to be here, right? <laughs> okay, so um, testing. let's create a, a Java E7 project. This uh, is just a maiden script which creates an archetype because uh, I'm lazy and I don't want to create some new project over and over again. I will use IntelliJ in this awfully white font because then you can see it better. Testing on file which just uh, opens the newly created project. And yeah, that's it. This uh, is just an uh, archetype, it's uh, from, uh, from LB. I can show you, this is the most simple Java E7 form, form file. And uh, this is all you need for Java E7, because mostly you're shipping a lot of dependencies which you actually don't need. So the thing here is I'm using Java E7 together with uh, Java 8. And this is the key thing, this uh, API which uh, is included as the dependency is provided which means it won't end up in your WAR file, which means your WAR file is pretty empty as it only contains your business code, your Java E7 code, and that's it. Therefore, you have an empty WAR file and a very fast build time and a very fast deployment time. A long story, but not in this talk. Now it's about testing. Um, so it's empty besides a, a JAXRS uh, configuration, as we want to need uh, some JAXRS web service maybe later. But for now, I'm starting with an EJB, right? So I'm called that whatever you want, just boundary. And um, of course, the font size is big enough. Okay, um, we are writing one business method, which um, wants to um, calculate, for example, the main purpose of the business. Just some business logic, whatever, uh, may be in your application. And we want to test that later. And of course, as we're Java and EE, we want to inject maybe another component with, uh, which does the job for us, so it's a point of the responsibility. Um, can you give me a name? Like some, just control. Some other component actually names don't, don't matter. 
what we want to um, was to create it as well. So we have one um, EJB and an injected CDI managed beam. This will be just a dependent scope, so it has no uh, annotations on it. And it has one method which just returns a string. I call a, a cinema. Right? And now we will ask the um, CDI managed beam for the string. And uh, now we uh, want to, let's say, Return the string plus the length. Like, uh, string plus will be string dot length, right? And that's it. So this will be our very complex business logic, right? And of course we can run this and blah blah blah. But now we want to test this in uh, probably the most simple way. So who of you uses JUnit? Okay. So question: Who uses Mojito? Almost everybody who uses Affiliate. Less <laughs> people, which is good because you don't need it, and I will show you why. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's try it. And now we want to, uh, we need to test the scope here. We have this boundary and we want to create a test, right? Test, boundary test, you know, we don't need fancy things as screw stuff like that. Oh, okay. That's fine. So <coughs> that's it. And what I'm showing you right now is pretty simple, but uh, there's a reason why I'm showing you that. So this will be a plain J unit test without any fancy runners, without any Anything else, just JUnit and Mojito, and I'm showing you why in a second, because you don't need anything else, and you shouldn't need anything else for the most uh, primitive use cases. So I'm now, um, to give you a short agenda, I'm talking about unit tests, and then um, shortly I will be talking about what are integration tests, or what I would call integration tests, they're not very named very clearly, what is an integration test if you integrate components a system, and so on and so forth and why you mostly need system tests and what these are. I'll show that in a second. But let's start with uh, JUnit, then it may be clear why you don't need things like Affiliate. Um, JUnit and Mojito. So this is our home file. And uh, as I said, I don't need anything else in dependencies. Now I add some, but these are all test dependencies. So they won't end up in your one file either. They're just needed as, uh, for the test, right? And now it knows the tests, and I will um, Write a test, test something that was to get a string length, right? And um, I have the, uh, what was that, boundary, the class on the test. And um, I might set up the test. And now, this is the interesting part. As I said, I use a plain J unit only. And since uh, Java 7, 6, and the recent versions, you don't have anything else than annotated projects for your EJBs and for your CDI feeds, which is very good. Because um, if you would extend some uh, crazy abstract class and something else, you couldn't test that easily. But now in your test, you can just simply instantiate your classes and just call the um, business uh, methods just as it would be a normal class, as it is. Everything else here will be injected manually, just how you want it in your test. So now, and this is the reason why I didn't grow private here, because I want to have a package private visibility. As it resides in the same package, just in the test scope and, and, and not in the main scope, I can just simply rewrite the control, or actually set the control on my newly created instance here, which is very the simplest possible solution, so I don't need any reflection or black magic to set that component, right? So I could now either instantiate another control, right, that's simple, or I use, as you know, Mojito um, to, yeah, whatever, to um, create the control. And then, of course, as you said, most of you know Mojito, so I don't have to show that. I can um, then do some uh, mocking on that class here. So that's pretty much it, and my test is uh, set up. Now I have uh, the instantiated beam here with that manually. Set, and now I can um, test my logic here, depending on uh, what I want to do. 
So let's configure the mock first. Uh, when dot control get string, then return right hello. And now we want to say now we want to call the business method, right? And that's the um, actual. And now you can assert that this um, comes with the J unit. This so you don't have to be uh, have to write assert equals every time. You can use um, anchor matches, which is, which is um, actually quite simple and pretty readable. Like as, uh, assert that something is something else, right? And now we want to have hello three four five something like this, right? And that's basically it. So now we can run the test here. Of course, that's, that's pretty simple and pretty boring, but the key point is you don't need anything else. And when you have a lean Java 7 approach, then this is sufficient for all your beans, no matter if they're EJ beans or CDI attached beans or something else. Because everything, you, you just inst instantiate them, and everything which they uh, want to connect to is just marked using simple marquee and just set in a simple way so you don't need anything else, right? Now you could have um, a lot of uh, other logic, a lot of uh, tests here as well, something like you want another test like this, and stuff like that. And the, the other part, uh, point why I'm doing this is they run very fast. Because the point uh, on testing is you want to have reliable tests and you want to have fast tests. Because you want to have a really, really fast build or whatever continuous something pipeline, and you don't want to wait half an hour until the tests are finished. And the problem is with Achillean, or like if you use Spring with Spring context tests. And for those of you who don't know Achillean, so Achillean is a pretty a powerful tool to instantiate an embedded container, which then runs your. Um, Beans, your EJBs, your CDI beans, in a somewhat similar way as they would run on a real application server, which can be handy in various situations. I'll show you uh, in a second. But the point is, it starts up an embedded server each time, which takes a lot of time. Maybe two seconds depending on a computer. Even just if it uh, is just half a second, if you have like hundreds of them, even if you reuse re some tests, but you know they are very very slow. And you have a lot of them. And here you can see this is um, 200, uh, 300 milliseconds, which is a lot, but only because it takes a, it takes a long time to, to set up. A long time. It takes a while to set up JUnit for the first time, but once it's set up, it will run hundreds of tests in really no time. And I mean no time. You can have hundreds of tests in half a second. And this is sufficient to, um, to unit test everything. In your, um, Java E applications, agree? Yes, question. Why did you not use the uh, uh, index as a constructor? The constructor for what? With uh, the application index. Ah, you want to have a uh, construction based uh, injection? Yeah. I normally don't use a construction based injection because I think this is uh, more readable. As you have, when you have constructor based injection, you have a constructor, which is a uh, method, constructor in fact. And then you still have all of these fields here, but just without the annotation. So I would say this is more readable as you don't want the constructor, you want the business logic, which are in fact your business methods here, down here. And here you see all the um, required and injected components. And in my eyes, this is the most simple way. And um, constructor based injection also has another few problems if you're doing more. Um, uh, more enhanced CDI stuff and stuff like that. So this is, I would say, the simplest way for an EJP to see that in HP. Just one using it. A very good. I uh, forgot to mention, if you have any questions anytime, don't hesitate to ask. So I want to do this more interactively. Any other questions on this approach? Why I'm doing that? Um, Java E, yes. Why are you using the Mokiti J unit, brother? Or this is a very good question because it's faster and you don't need it. So um, the, the young runner, you, you could have some benefits, I know. You could then have something like injection here. You say this is uh, inject mocks and stuff like that, and now your control is at mock, and then, and then it will kind of mock this and inject the other, um, and create the other one, and then inject the mock in your things. But this is more magic, I would say, and this is more simple, and also quite readable, I argue, right? You just 
um, write the things uh, you want to have as fields here and then you um, set it up once and in your test you just configure it uh, like you want to have your your mock, right? Your mock behavior. Very good question. Any other questions? Good. Okay, um, what did I want to say? Yeah, about the uh, activity and why do you don't, you don't need it. Um, for unit tests, yeah, that's it. You don't need more for unit tests. Um, I, in the past, I said a few times why you should not do like integration tests with um, Achillean and stuff like that. So the next, this is a very basic level of testing. It's just testing a unit, in fact, the class here. And now you could, of course, want to do a, a greater scope of testing. So the thing is, actually, you want to test everything, everything in terms of every use case you have in the application, right? So you don't want um, the point is, I personally don't believe in QA departments because they are human people. Okay? And if you have human people, but not with automated processes, but with somebody clicking your application or firing against the web service and then manually checking if it does the job right, it doesn't work right every time because humans are humans are not computers, and you should use computers for automated tasks. And in fact, you should test and do everything in an automated way. It's the same way why you should not log in into production application server and deploy a WAR file manually. CI servers are for that. Are built for that. And the same is true for testing. So you should test it in an automated way. And the thing is, um, you need system tests uh, anyway. So what are system tests? Or at least what I would call system tests. So for me, some uh, people might, might disagree. Integration tests are like integrating several components not systems here. So actually you would use something like an embedded test framework like Achillean to fire up like embedded um, components like CBI uh, or EJDs and then connecting some of them uh, to each other and then um, firing up some business uh, logic and testing result. This is for me integration tests when I uh, say integration tests like now like integrating components and system tests uh, for me is like testing the whole application. And the point is in the same way as it would run on production, which means your application, like your application server and your WAR file or whatever you have, um, runs in the same way and behaves in the same way as it would be in production. There are no any other configuration or any other properties that's built the same way. And everything else which you don't want to test, like external systems, like clients you want to, uh, don't want to test, like databases, is marked away. So you always no matter on which level you are, have you asked to, uh, have you to ask yourself, what do I want to test? And in that case, you want to test your application, right? You don't want to test any other external systems, that's their job. But we want to test the application, how it behaves, and if it behaves like it's supposed to be. This means for a system test, and this is the reason why I would consider these as the most important, you're deploying your system, your application, on some environment whatsoever, but in the same way, not in an embedded container, not uh, configured any other way, but in the same way as on production, so you know that it will, be beha will behave the same way as in production, and then everything else you don't want to test is marked away, like in a uh, like database. So how does that look like? You um, deploy it in there, you, um, you rewrite and remap all the external systems and databases to some mock, to the mock system whatsoever, external mock, and then you can fire up like um, REST service calls as if your uh, client would uh, send them to your system and then you check is the response the same as expected and is like, uh, like the status of the database the same as expected afterwards. And the point is if you're doing some integration tests, some, like a, everything which, uh, which differs from production, then you never know if it will be really the same when you run it on production. Because these things like uh, properties which are configured differently, like an embedded database which is not the real database, would maybe behave differently. So you just can't be sure if it will really succeed in production. And this is the reason in my talk why you need system tests anyway, which tests your whole application for all your business use cases. And then the point is, I said testing with least developer frustration so you want to test in you know, a productive way. You don't want to spend all your time testing because you don't get all the time from the manager, right? So this is why I say you have to have system tests, which cover as most as possible. 
And then you don't need anything else or much else because these should cover everything you want to test, right? And everything else is just like extra with maybe a faster feedback. So this is the reason why I argue you don't need Achillean and you don't need like um, component-based integration tests because the same thing is tested in system tests anyway. They just provide you some faster feedback, but they slow down the whole pipeline, right? Any questions? Somebody disagrees? Sorry? Okay, sure. You can just if you have any questions or you don't agree, then just tell me. <laughs> that, that's fine. Um, okay. okay, so yes. Uh, system tests are not as fast as Yeah, this, it this is the, exactly. And this is the the, the point. Um, as I said, you have faster feedback with integration tests, but if you do only like JUnit tests, which I showed are very very fast, and then deploy automatic, uh, automatically, and if you have this is the second thing, a lean Java E seven approach, like this one where you only use the Java E7 provider functionality, then your build time and your deployment time is very fast. So if you don't use any embedded containers, or just you um, deploy on Wildfly, and I can also show that in a second, and it will run in seconds, right? If you have a decent uh, Java E7 application, so it will deploy in five seconds. And then you just fire up the system tests, I will show a few uh, also in a minute, which are also fast because you're just like uh, a bunch of HTTP calls or whatever you have. You whatever you want to test. If you have some web sockets, so you can fire up a web socket client and stuff like that. And this is in fact also quite fast, right? Once you have your deployed application, you have a bunch of HTTP tests. Even against the local loopback interface, it's not even milliseconds, right? So they are in fact fast if you, you know, do the right thing and use the Java E seven uh, only approach. Uh, um, a common talk of mine is why Java E uh, is actually pretty lightweight and not heavyweight uh, as it's considered to be. If you're doing the right thing and stay Java E 7 at best lean only, then you are in fact very fast without any other help. And the point is if you have a lot of integration tests, as I, as I said, these are which, which make it both time very slow. Because then, you know, it's uh, like the same you would, uh, like if you would deploy to production a hundred times, right? You have a hundred of affiliate tests and then they are starting an embedded container with, let's say, half a second, a hundred times, for example. Of course this is slow. And then you say, okay, we have a slow build pipeline because Java is slow. No, it's not. <laughs> you know? Everybody else disagrees? Just tell me. Okay, and um, now I want to show you another thing, uh, a more like integration test, which is very helpful. And what even, uh, or also without a Killian, so, for example, this is just an EJD, but if you have like, um, uh, like an NTDB, so like something, uh, let's put something, this will be an NTDB, right? Entity with some table, some things, and Maybe an ID, this will be a generated value. I'm just uh, writing some boring um, entity being here. I can maybe have a string with a name, and yeah, that's, that's always sufficient. It's just about um, how to test if everything we, we did here with the JPA mapping was correct. So, for example, if you have a complex mapping with many to one, one to many, and blah blah, you can easily misconfigure your uh, annotations, right? And you don't want to fire up uh, your application server just to see, oh, I missed some annotation here, right? So this is something where you probably want to have one, not hundreds, one integration test firing up, just checking if your JPA and nothing was right, right? So you have a JPA here, you would have an um, persistence XML, but actually not now we want to just have the test. And resources, this is... Um, and um, it's called it's. I'm setting up a test um, persistent XML right now. So persistence. If I uh, what's that? So this is um, a persistent XML in the test scope, which will uh, only be used for tests. 
actually, and I will show you how in a second. So now you would argue, oh, now I of course need a Killian because I want to have an embedded container with an embedded database, right? No, you don't. You can do everything without a Killian here. Um, so what did we have here? We had an, um, a resource local um, API configuration, log, right? And we have our class, the cool name is something. And that's it, now our test is uh, configured here. And now we want to have an integration test of that something. <coughs> right? um, so we have a test. Now it's uh, called something IT. The reason why I'm doing that is it should be an integration test. And this is actually a maiden, um, maiden convention. Everything which is called IT is an integration test and will normally not be run using maiden uh, surefire test. Only if you use failsafe integration test, but that's another topic we don't have to find for, to talk about everything here. Um, set up. Now we want to have an entity manager, right? Because we want to. So what? What, what do we want to do? We oh sorry. Bigger. Um, we want to check if the mapping was correct, right? So we want to store that in an embedded database once, only to see if everything works, and that's it. Um, so we have an entity manager, and the thing is, we can do that without anything like embedded thing, we can just use plain Java SE to um, use JPA, like SE in your tests. If you use persistence, Java X persistence, create an entity manager um, factory which uses that persistence unit, which was called IT, here it is, test. and then um, create an entity manager, and that's it, and now you have um, oops, sorry. Entity manager. And now you configure the entity manager and set it up uh, correctly. Um, and now, what do we want to have? We need to tell the entity manager that it will um, start a user transaction. You, of course, don't have to do that in a uh, Java E environment as your EJV context is um, in charge of that, but now we would have, uh, we'd have to do that um, to begin a committed transaction. And between that, that we want to have a new uh, something, a new entity, and that's it. So we created a new entity and just stored it um, into an embedded database. So um, this is using an embedded um, Derby database. So we have to have, just for the test purpose, an embedded um, derby. What is the name of my, I have too much uh, live templates. <coughs> because I'm lazy and I can't remember everything. Embedded database dependency. <laughs> so now we have the derby. In a test scope, of course. So as I said, everything just test scope. Everything else is forbidden. And we need Eclipse Link. Why? Because Eclipse Link is the uh, reference implementation of JPA. And of course, we have JPA on the server side, but not in our client, in our test side, right? But JUnit doesn't know JPA yet. So we need something to run. Uh, as now we only have the API here, right? But now we really need an implementation just for our test to run that example. Make sense? Any questions? Yes. Are you using an embedded database? Yes, Derby? I am Derby. Yeah, um, but you're not running it in production. So you're not running it in production, right? Exactly. And this is the only thing, well, maybe not the only, this is one of the few things where I say, um, say it still makes sense. So the question is totally valid. And um, why then am I using Derby if I am, for example, using Oracle in production, right? Because they may differ, and in fact, they will do. And we had that problem in production. But still, I would argue for like 95% of the, um, of the um, errors, mistakes you make by misconfiguring JPA um, annotations, these are in fact cases where it doesn't matter, where it would fail on an embedded database as well. It will fail. I will show some um, scenario in a second. But very good question, and this is a totally valid point, and this is the reason why you only use something like this, like merge and store, without any testing any business logic. This is just like, do it there if I do something completely wrong, then it will tell me. But it will not test any business logic. 
you still need system tests. But this is a very fast feedback, and I um, show you why in a second. For example, if I have now we typical use case, we have another um, property called order, right? And you might guess that this will fail because of SQL syntax, right? Order, uh, order is our keyword, right? Okay. Um, so, bam, oh, SQL statement fail because it's order, right? Syntax error. And why, of course, order is a, is a keyword in SQL, right? And Java developers don't think of that because order is just a name, right? But not in SQL, where is my uh, thing. And if you're using Oracle, like every second uh, word of the English language is a reserved keyword, <laughs> right? Um, so thing is basic and uh, column. So this is the normal approach, how you do, like name, uh, something order, right? This is how you fix that problem. So you rename the column in a database. Now it runs again. And this is very fast. And this is the reason why you have one of these integration tests which fire up an embedded database just to see if everything is all right. And you don't even need to run them every time. This is why I call them IT. So they won't, be, uh, won't run in a normal Maven build. They just run uh, when you need them. And you're like, they change the mapping just to see, okay, if I did uh, do something completely wrong, then it will tell me. It will, of course, not tell me if there is an Oracle reserve keyword, which is not unlike a Derby reserve keyword. They are awesome. And this way, then fail only in production, but something easily wrong like that, you get a fast keyword. Still, you don't need a code, right? You can use plain um, JPA, like uh, client side only features to create an MVP manager for this is something very uh, simple here. Um, okay, so I rented a lot against the Killian. Now I will show you uh, one use case where you could need it. Um, so let's include it, but this should be really rare. And this should not be used for, um, for normal business logic. So you should not, um, I argue, we should not use the Killian to test business logic. And you get a lot of dependencies here, a nice uh, parent pom file, and blah blah. And we use here a filling with an embedded glass fish. Actually, it doesn't matter. Um, you can have a lot of Achillean, there are a lot of Achillean um, conference talks, so go to that if you want to hear about more about uh, Achillean. Now we do an Achillean test and for our boundary. So here we now have our first time in a runner, an Achillean runner, because now we need something really uh, crazy in our test. We just uh, changed that for a second to web archive, and this, uh, this was just created by um, IntelliJ. But, uh, we have here at classes, boundary, and control. So as I said, Achillean is an embedded, like an embedded application server kind of thing, um, which emulates an application server and creates some beans as they, if they would run a production. So what do we do here? We create something which looks like a web archive, like a wall file, which only includes like beans, XML, blah, blah, boring, and two of our uh, classes here, two of our beans, and nothing else. This is the same thing as you would ship a wall file only with these two things here. And the reason for that is so it will be faster, sure. If you say, okay, now my um, integration test for these components should only need these components. Of course, there's a problem with that. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. And the second thing is, here this is both the configuration and also like the test itself, this class here, this IT. So you could, in fact, inject the boundary in your test class and then write a test like uh, what was the string length? Yeah. And now, boundary, you call, can call this method here. And um, just for now, it doesn't matter. And now, it will run that. And the, the thing is, now the class is managed by Achillean, so it will be instantiated as it would on an application server, right? 
and it will also in, uh, inject the component here. So, for example, now it knows really the, uh, the Java E uh, API, which is not known if you run it yourself uh, by JUnit, what I showed before, right? So if you have something like um, um, a post construct, and you want to do something like this, right? It would not work in a JUnit test, right? But now it uh, will run that in your integration test. And yeah, this is another thing. You have to configure a lot of things. You don't need that if you if you need that only in your maven build. But if you want to run that in your IDE as well, which of course we want, you need to configure a bunch of things. And hopefully it works. Achillean is sometimes a little bit tricky to set up. And this is another reason why I'd say just go with plain JUnit. It's simple and everybody knows how to use it. Because you have a lot of different um, containers which you want to pass. You have an embedded class with Wi-Fi, Tommy, whatever you want to have because they kind of behave different. And uh, here, that was the post construct method. Control equals um, our uh, proxy here and our Barcelona from the control itself. So it set it up the correct con uh, control, injected it into that, and now you can do your asserts here. Of course, this is pretty handy, and this is probably the reason why a lot of people like overuse Aculean to test everything and all kind of business logic, because of course you don't need to inject um, and instantiate your beam manually, but in an automated way, right, which is handy and, uh, and easy, of course, but at the same time, uh, it takes a lot, like here, half a second, and it will take half a second every time because you see all these locks here and blah blah blah. <coughs> and this is the reason why you shouldn't use it. So when do you want to use it? Like I did this post construct method here. So this of course can only be tested using the security test. Another example is if you have some plumbing, um, something like um, crazy complex CDI extensions like CDI producers and stuff like that which you just want to make sure, like the JPA test I showed before, you just want to make sure if you've got all the annotations right in Java E, right? Because writing Java E is quite simple if you know what you're doing. You really have to, you know, you know that. You have to take care, did I get the right uh, annotations? Did I get the right import, right? This is always the case. So you just want to make sure if you, did, if you configured anything right. And you have no chance to test that without any container. So if you have like an app producers from CDI, or like you have a CDI uh, event, what, uh, what we saw in another um, Java E talk today, of course there's no way to test it using your unit. You, of course you could um, uh, use that and invoke that functionality by yourself, but you, then you're not uh, certain if that's correct and if it will be the, the same in application server. So. so this is one of the reasons um, why it's helpful to have integration tested sometimes. But this should be the exception. And only if you do really complex, crazy complex things like your own CDI extensions, maybe your own CDI scopes, stuff like that, which are not normal in normal enterprise projects, I argue. So in fact, you, like for 95%, you don't need a killing. Yes, sir. Uh, it's more of a test strategy question. Uh, do you in your project use Docker in any kind of way to kind of get system or integration test a bit closer to you? Or do you just skip integration tests altogether and hope that the system tests or um, catch it in the system test phase? At first I would skip them altogether. So only if you need some crazy... Con uh, the point is what I said before, your system test tests these anyway. So if you misconfigure anything um, in terms of Java E, then it will fail on production anyway and in your system test anyway. It's just a faster feedback, you know? You wrote a bunch of um, classes and injected them and blah 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 and then you want to just make sure in a fast way like this JPA example did I, edit, uh, did I do everything right without deploying it okay everything right skip it again but actually I would say you don't need it only for more complex things so I would skip them at first and yes I would use Docker but for like everything it's mm -hmm. possible so as I said you should run your system test in the same way like your production so if you use Docker which is a very good way especially for Java E this is a whole nother talk, and it makes sense to, to use Docker, and then it makes sense to use Docker, of course, for your system tests and production in the same way as well, sure. But then your system tests are also quite fast, and find stuff like that easily, but it's just faster feedback. 
So, um, yeah, as I said, you, you would need uh, Qlium to test some like crazy complex CDI extensions, uh, producers, stuff like that, CDI scopes, whatever you want to have, but this should be the exception. And normally you don't have really complex things in, in Java E projects, so that doesn't count, and that also doesn't count, I would argue. So for the most things you don't need integration test using Qlium here. And yeah, but this is why you could need it. So, any questions on that? On the Cyclonian kind of thing? No? Okay, then let's uh, move on. Um, now I have a kill here. So, what, what else? Um, now we have unit tests, we have uh, integra kind of integration tests, now we want to have system tests. Um, and these are the most interesting, I would argue. In a real world project, these are the least common, unfortunately. So mostly we have a lot of unit tests and a few slow integration tests, or at least this is what I discovered. Uh, but rarely system tests. Sometimes you have some like uh, integration tests on systems level, where you kind of wire all kinds of tests together, like in the UAT um, uh, environment. So you have all of the external systems with, with other teams, you know, you'll try to manage, oh, when is your deployment for version blah blah, and then we can connect these uh, together. I argue this doesn't work, because there are always mismatches, and some systems it's always not running, and then you get failing tests, and then you say, oh yeah, it's because of the other system, and you start looking at your tests. So the point is, and this is what I said before, your tests have to be reliable. So when the test is read, then either your production code is wrong or your test is wrong. But it's nothing like, oh, this is bad luck because the internet is down, because the external system is down. No, don't do it. And your, set, your test should be self-contained, which means you run your application the same way as in production, but you run then everything else that you don't want to test marked away, but on the, like on the same system, so that it's reliable. And what I said uh, before, how do we use that? We deploy our application, like in, in whatever way, on the application server, and then our system test is in fact something like a client. It actually doesn't even have to be Java, it's just testing our system from the outside, which means like REST servers calls, web sockets uh, calls, testing the uh, HTML front end, or like uh, Selenium or uh, Graphene and stuff like that. And then testing, of course, all the other external systems. These are then just mocked using stuff like mock server which are something like Mojito, but in a really systems level. So you can configure them as well. Like when there is some request, then we turn it that way, and at the end verify that the request has been made, stuff like that, on an external system level, and of course on a database level. And I can show you a short example here. Um, for, uh, we, we don't have, uh, have time for everything. This is why I do two dedicated days for the workshops, um, because it's uh, a lot of uh, stuff here. I can show you one thing, because of the short time I prepared something. <coughs> this is a completely uh, other topic, it's uh, Juxtra's Hypermedia, and it uses some, uh, some style siren stuff. But in fact, uh, what's interesting for us, it's, it's a Juxtra REST endpoint, which uses uh, Hypermedia REST uh, with some links and stuff like that. And we just want to, um, I want to show you how to access that on the client side, so on the system test side, and how to verify against it, that you system, so that will be your system which you're testing here, is behaving in a correct way. Um, so we are building that and we are running that on Wildfly, but actually it doesn't matter, there's another kind of code. Um, but I can show you in a second what's that about. And yeah, as I said, Java E it's quite fast, so it's already deployed in like seven seconds. And this will be your system test as well, right? So your system test needs seven seconds, plus the thing I'll show you right now. Um, so, I can just show you how that looks like. You could use any HTTP client, as I said, Java, it doesn't matter, so I will use the command line. I will not here. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry for Java keys, and just the bad name of my resources, it doesn't matter. Oh, just because I can, we will use fancy uh, command line logic to pretty print that. So what do we have here? It's a somewhat like hypermedia REST service. So we have this resource, and then it links to other resources. And we want to test that. 
using our system test, which means this is the application, and now we're accessing the REST um, endpoint, and then we may be even following links, right? Um, so, of course, this is the wrong project, but anyway, normally you would have a dedicated project for your system tests, as it's really like, like a client, and you know, we don't have much time left. So, um, the reason what I'm, what I'm showing you is like, oh, system, system test, system IT. I'm also I'm calling that IT, so it doesn't run on default, but it's just information. Um, as I said, you could use anything to do a system test. You could use shell scripts, right, to fire up curl or something. But I would use still use uh, JUnit and standards as much as, as much as possible. Why? Because the Java developers use them anyway, right? So the Java developers are familiar with JUnit, and probably I will now use JaxRS on the client side, and so JaxRS also ships a client API to access that. Um, so we have um, we set up our so-called client builder, a new client, will be a client here, and then a client um, at the target, just what I wrote before. This will be like a, a default, and this will be our target under test. And now we can test that. Like request, um, please request JSON, right? And now get without any um, argument. So we have a response, and this is the response which just uh, was uh, requested from the server. And now we can uh, say something like assert, and this is the reason why I'm using uh, JUnit because now it's really simple. We get like uh, status info, and then family is successful. So it um, what I'm testing here. Imports, JUnit, import, natural. So I'm testing that the response will be 200 something, right? So I'm asserting that. And just to show you, I will have the response uh, read entity. As in this case, just a JSON object. This is um, JSONP logic. So your JSON, uh, this reads a JSON object, so what we just saw in the response and return, because we don't have too much time left. So um, what do we have here? We use the uh, JaxRS client side. So we, in, in the same thing like JPA before, we need um, a JaxRS client implementation, as we only have the, um, the API here, JaxRS client. So we use uh, Jersey, Jersey is the reference implementation of JaxRS and Jersey client version, and some other stuff to do the JSON processing here um, with the JSP what, what I had. But actually it doesn't matter, but I will stick with the standards as you have these the same standards on your Java E application anyway, right? So it's very simple to use it. And then you even have like an example how to use your service if you write a client for it, right? Because it will be the same way. So um, let's run that example. So we'll access our application. Put it everything right. Yeah. So now we have that uh, JSON object with all the links. <coughs> and let's say now we want to follow these links. Um, entity into a JSON object. JSON object um, get JSON array. This is uh, now the JSONP again get values. <coughs> as um, the values as a JSON object, so we have a list of all these values, so then we can use uh, fancy Java 8 functionality to stream over, over them. So uh, what do we want to do now? We want to follow that hypermedia API. Like I showed, we have a bunch of links, and now we want to follow these links, if like the links were correct, right, where they pointed to. And of course, this is a, a, lot, a big topic, how to, how to system test that, but only as a short example, now we have a REST endpoint, and you want to test that, right? And uh, what do we have? Now we have the links, so these objects here, embedded objects, which are uh, JSON objects. So we map the objects to um, string to href, which uh, gives us the URI here. And now for that URI for each of that string, we can now do another call 
like, um, what was that, a client, another target, and now it will use the link as the target. So again, a Jaxa REST client uh, call to that link here, to that subsequent link. And we will again request uh, JSON, stuff like that. Now we have another response. And now it's the same thing, assert that, another get status info like family. And you could, here you could test whatever you like, right? So now you want to probably test that, uh, you can also do this here, um, that your response was correct, right? With the JSON object, like uh, get JSON array out of the links, and then equals, it has three links in it, for example. So you could, you know, just be creative, uh, test what you ever want to test here, successful. That's it, and just oh yeah, just because we can, we will out uh, put it another. And um, yeah, that's the response. Oh, yeah. And read entity. This is a JSON object. JSON object. So this will be then the uh, response of the second thing. I got the card that the talk is over, and put the test ball work as well. And yeah, that's it. So the, this was the first response, and then it followed three links, right? Links for books, shopping carts, all or whatever that is. But this is uh, a way how to test um, your system test for just for the rest of the client. There are other things like web sockets, like, and you could use Selenium plus Graphene to do the same thing. Then you could use your Achillean. This is a pretty handy thing to use Achillean plus Graphene, but only on the system test side, so nothing in your application on your system type, like from the external to test your HTML stuff like that. And this is how you would design simple system tests. Yeah, that's it. Any questions? So thanks a lot for your attention. <laughs>